Hi guys, welcome back to engineeringtalks.com. In this video, we'll deal with the topic shear force and bending moment diagrams of a simply supported beam with uniformly varying load. So, happy learning and if you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do subscribe and press the bell icon. Here I have shown a simply supported beam carrying a uniformly varying load from 0 at one end to W at the other end. You can clarify your doubts on uh, the important types of beams and the types of loadings by watching the previous videos on these topics. I will provide the links in the description. In the previous videos, I have explained that we have to convert this uniformly varying load into an equivalent point load for solving the numerical problems. These uniformly varying loads are also known as triangular loads. So, this point load will be equal to the area of this triangle. The area of this triangle will be equal to half into L into W which is equal to WL by 2 and the point load will be acting at the CG of the triangle. So, CG of this triangle will be at a distance of L by 3 from the right end and 2L by 3 from the left end. So, this equivalent point load WL by 2 will be acting at a distance of 2L by 3 from the end A and L by 3 from the end B. As a result of the externally applied load, we will have reactions at both the supports of the simply supported beam. Let RA and RB be the reactions at the ends A and B. Now, we will have to find out these reactions. These reactions Ra and Rb can be found out by taking the moments about the end A or moments about the end B. Let's take the moments about the end A. We know that Ma equal to Mb equal to 0 for a simply supported beam. Therefore, summation Ma will be equal to 0. Let's consider a section like this at this end A. Now, we have this reaction force and this point load on the right portion of the section. This reaction force Rb, which is acting in the upward direction, has the tendency to rotate this beam in the anti-clockwise direction with respect to this section. And any moment in the anti-clockwise direction on the right portion of the section will be considered as positive. Therefore, the moment at this section due to this reaction force Rb will be positive. And this point load is acting in the downward direction and has the tendency to rotate the beam in the clockwise direction like this with respect to the section. And any moment in the clockwise direction on the right portion of the section is considered as negative. Therefore, the moment at this section due to this point load will be negative. Therefore, the resultant moment at this section due to the reaction force Rb and the point load Wl by 2 will be equal to Rb into perpendicular distance. Rb into perpendicular distance is L. So, plus Rb into L minus WL by 2 into the perpendicular distance. Perpendicular distance is 2L by 3. So, minus WL by 2 into 2L by 3 and this will be equal to 0. Therefore, Rb into L will be equal to WL square by 3. You can cancel out these two in the uh, numerator and denominator and you will get it as WL square by 3. Now, Rb will be equal to WL square by 3L which will be equal to WL by 3. Now, let us consider the equilibrium of the forces. So, summation Fy will be equal to 0. Therefore, Ra minus WL by 2 plus Rb will be equal to 0. Therefore, Ra is equal to WL by 2 minus Rb which is equal to WL by 2 minus WL by 3. You can substitute WL by 3 in the place of Rb. Now, this will be equal to WL by 6. Therefore, Ra is equal to WL by 6. Let us now find out the shear force and bending moment values along the length of this beam. For that, we have to consider a section like this at a distance of x meters from the end A. Let fx be the shear force and mx be the bending moment at this section. In order to find out these values of shear force and bending moment at this section, we have to consider either the left portion of the section or the right portion of the section. Let us consider the left portion of the section. So, this is the left portion of the section. Here we have a reaction force Ra acting in the upward direction at the end A and a uniformly varying load spread over a distance of x meters. 
Before converting this uniformly varying load into a point load, we have to find out the value of y. So for finding out this value, let's compare this triangle and this triangle. So w by l will be equal to y by x. So y will be equal to wx by l. Therefore, the point load will be equal to the area of this triangle. So which will be equal to half into wx by l into x which is equal to wx square by 2l. So this will be the point load which will be acting at the CG of this triangle. So CG of this triangle will be at a distance of x by 3 from this end and 2x by 3 from this end. RA is in the upward direction. Any force in the upward direction on the left portion of the section will be considered as positive and any force in the downward direction on the left portion of the section will be considered as negative. And shear force is equal to the algebraic sum of the forces acting on either the left portion or the right portion of the section. Since we have considered the left portion of the section, it will be equal to the algebraic sum of the forces on the left portion of the section. So it will be equal to plus RA minus WX square by 2L. Therefore, Fx will be equal to Ra minus Wx square by 2L which is equal to Wl by 6 minus Wx square by 2L because Ra is equal to Wl by 6. Now, at this end A, x will be equal to 0. Therefore, Fa will be equal to Wl by 6 minus 0 which is equal to Wl by 6. Therefore, at the end A, we have shear force is equal to Wl by 6. Now, at the end B, x will be equal to L. Therefore, Fb will be equal to Wl by 6 minus Wl square by 2L, which will be equal to Wl by 6 minus Wl by 2, which will be equal to Wl minus 3Wl by 6, which will be equal to minus 2Wl by 6, which will be equal to minus Wl by 3. Therefore, the shear force at the end B will be equal to minus Wl by 6. Therefore, the shear force uh, varies from a value of Wl by 6 at the end A to a value of minus Wl by 3 at the end B. And we can see that the shear force has changed its sign from positive to negative between the points A and B. Therefore, somewhere between the points A and B, shear force must be 0. And from this equation, it is clear that shear force is a function of square of the distance of the section from the end A. Therefore, the variation of the shear force will be according to parabolic law. Let's draw the shear force diagram. So, first we will draw the baseline like this. At this end A, shear force is equal to plus WL by 6. So, we will mark it above the baseline using a vertical straight line. So, this is plus WL by 6. Now, at this end B, shear force is equal to minus WL by 3. So, we will mark it below the baseline like this. So, this is minus WL by 3 and this is plus WL by 6. Now, we have to join this point and this point using a parabolic curve because shear force is proportional to the square of the distance of the section from the end A. That is, it varies according to parabolic law. So, we have to mark this variation using a parabolic curve. So, let's mark it using a parabola like this. Okay. Now, we can shade these two regions and mark it as positive and negative. So, this is the shear force diagram. Uh, of a simply supported beam with a uniformly varying load. And you can see here at this point, shear force is equal to 0. Let's mark this point as C. Let this point C be at a distance of x meters from the end A. Let's consider a section at this point. So, at a section at a distance of x meters from the end A, we know that shear force is equal to WL by 6 minus WX square by 2L. And at this point C, shear force is equal to 0. So, we can equate this to 0. Therefore, WX square by 2L will be equal to WL by 6. Therefore, X square will be equal to 2L square by 6 which will be equal to L square by 3. Therefore, X is equal to L by root 3 which is equal to 0.577 into L. So, this distance 
is equal to L by root 3 that is 0.577 times the total length of the beam from the end A. Let's now find out the bending moment variation along the length of this beam. We know that MA equal to MB equal to 0. Let's now consider a section X at a distance of X meters from the end A. In order to find out the bending moment at this section, we have to consider either the left portion of the section or the right portion of the section. Let's consider the left portion of the section. On the left portion of the section, we have a reaction force RA acting in the upward direction and a point load WX square by 2L acting in the downward direction. This reaction force RA has the tendency to rotate this beam in the clockwise direction like this with respect to this section, right? And any moment in the clockwise direction on the left portion of the section is considered as positive. Therefore, the moment at this section due to this reaction force will be positive. Now we have a point load acting in the downward direction and having the tendency to rotate this beam in the anti-clockwise direction with respect to this section. Any moment in the anti-clockwise direction on the left portion of the section is considered as negative. Therefore, the moment at this section due to this point load will be negative. Hence, the resultant moment at this section due to Ra and Wx square by 2L will be Ra into perpendicular distance. Perpendicular distance between Ra and the section is x. Therefore, plus Ra into x minus Wx square by 2L into x by 3 because x by 3 is the perpendicular distance between the point load and the section. So, uh, mx will be equal to Ra into x minus Wx square by 2L into x by 3 which is equal to Ra is equal to WL by 6. So, WL by 6 into x minus Wx cube by 6L. We know that maximum bending moment usually occurs at the point where the shear force becomes zero after changing its sign from positive to negative or vice versa. From the shear force diagram, we obtain that this distance is equal to L by root 3. That is, at a distance of L by root 3 from the end A, shear force is zero. So, the maximum bending moment will be at a distance of L by 3 from the end A. So, maximum bending moment is equal to W L by 6 into L by root 3. Just substitute L by root 3 in the place of X. So, W L by 6 into L by root 3 minus W L by 6 into L by root 3 the whole cube which is equal to W L square by 6 root 3 minus W L cube by 6 L into 3 root 3 because root 3 cube is 3 root 3 which is equal to W L square by 6 root 3 minus now we will cancel this L and this L cube. So it will become L square. So W L square by 18 root 3 which is equal to 3 W L square minus W L square by 18 root 3 which is equal to 2 W L square by 18 root 3 which is equal to W L square by 9 root 3. So this is the maximum bending moment. From this equation of bending moment, it is clear that bending moment is proportional to the cube of the distance of the section from the end A. It is proportional to x cube. So, bending moment variation will be according to cubic law. Therefore, we will have to represent the bending moment variation using cubic curves. Let's now draw the bending moment diagram. For that, we have to draw the baseline first. I have already drawn the baseline here. Now at the ends A and B, bending moment is equal to 0 and maximum bending moment occurs at the point C where the shear force is 0 after changing its sign from positive to negative and the maximum bending moment is equal to WL square by 9 root 3 and from this equation, it's clear that bending moment varies according to cubic law and we have to represent this variation using cubic curves. So, the cubic curve looks like this. So, at the ends A and B, bending moment is equal to 0 and at the point C, bending moment is maximum. And you can shade this region and mark it as positive. So, this is the bending moment diagram of a simply supported beam with a uniformly varying load over it. The shear force variation is represented using a parabolic curve and the bending moment variation is represented using a cubic curve. 
and here we have uh, the shear force value equal to W L by 6 and here at this end B shear force is equal to minus W L by 3 and the maximum bending moment is equal to W L square by 9 root 3 and it occurs at the point C where the shear force is 0. Please do like and share the video and subscribe the channel. Thank you.